Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net again. Okay, so I got a question that came in via my Zen desk here. Um, if you come under support on my website, right here, you'll find that email address. It's probably one of the better ways to reach me, but people still reach me via uh, Facebook as well as um, Facebook Messenger as well as Meetup as my last couple of videos have shown. Anyways, these questions. So this person's interested um, in purchasing three courses that I offer. Is there better pricing instead of the um, individual pricing? So if you come under product, what he's referring to are three courses that I've got on the go. Future Options Strategy Overview, Interactive Brokers API, and Algo Trading Components in Python. I have a few more. These ones on, if you ever decide to go with Duca's Copy, uh, as well. So I've got two of these and a sample of the interactive brokers. And I had another one. This, these, all these are on my Shopify. But anyways, um, the first one here that he's referring to is the futures, which is kind of like a fundamental analysis of uh, using futures market and options of all the major commodities, metal, financial, currencies. And this is pretty well what drives the market, no matter what you say. <laughs> supply and demand basically. This course is another one on interactive brokers, uh, which is gonna be hopefully my preferred broker. And they're pretty good at automation. They support all the major languages, C++, Java, Python, and, I've, and they also do C Sharp. But <clears throat> as I've said in one of my videos, um, I've had really severe technical issues with Windows and all the other stuff that goes on with Windows and Microsoft, so. I stay clear of all those products. Plus, I prefer to stay on um, open source technologies. The last one is the one that's probably the more popular one, Algo Trading Components in Python. So if you click on one of these View Course buttons here, what you'll find here is the exact breakdown of what you'll learn. So this one's more designed to build out a primitive, and the word is primitive, uh, trading system. So we'll walk you through why Python um, how to set up your environment, um, learn about <coughs> how to um, do the, the basics of Python uh, learning. And then we talk about the different databases that you can use. The one that I like, but sort of advanced is Redis. We can always skip this particular module. And then we go into all the different support level using Python with interactive brokers. And then of course we got the data sources like Yahoo Finance, and then the last part is your charting for visualization, and there's a variety of different um, ones that you can use. So that's pretty well it. Um, so obviously he's asking about the different pricing. So what I've got now is I've kind of brought back my old Elite membership, which is this one. Um, so if you click on that, this one, when you total everything up, it would cost you about three grand, and that's not including the annual um, membership that I'm also got this Quant Analytics, which is basically the trading one. Uh, that's a hundred bucks, and this one's most likely gonna go up per month. So what I've done is, um, as a combination for people that are really serious about uh, their trading and setting up an algo trading business, as I call it, which came from Dr. Ernie Chan, um, just come under here, Quant Elite Full Service. And this will give you pretty well everything um, and a year's worth of my Quant Analytics. And as I said, that's 100 bucks a month there. So when you look at this offering, um, you're getting all the courses. That runs you, I believe it's about, about $2,000 between these three, which will give you a very solid foundation. And then you move into this on top of the 12 months um, you know, this would probably be pushing anywhere from three to four thousand dollars. But right now, <clears throat> um, I'm just building it up again. Um, so, if you just click on these little PayPal buttons here, the little green one, you'll see here you get exactly as I described here, um, seven ninety seven for everything there. Plus, after a year of the Quant Analytics, you'll be uh, grandfathered in at ninety seven per month for the Quant Analytics service. And this is gonna be an exciting service because we're gonna have a trading chat room. We already got the Telegram group running. Um, 
which is a private messenger uh, right here. This one right here, uh, it's fairly active. Um, some very good people in it. Um, plus, I'm going to be doing a lot of private webinars, which we did one last night, um, every Monday, um, just to talk about technology and trading. Um, right now it's public, but we will eventually make it private for all my members. So when you look at that, that's going to push it up to probably in the neighborhood of three hundred a month. And that I'm hoping to do over the next uh, year. So that's pretty well the direction we're going in. Um, and hopefully, uh, if you are an early bird and want to take advantage of that kind of rate, um, now's the time. Hopefully, I'll help you out. Talk to you later. Haha, uh -huh. as I was blabbing, I forgot to continue on about all these questions and stuff. Um, so, as I said uh, in my previous little blurb there, uh, he's asking about three courses offered and da da da. So, I said it looks like everything's ready to go, and I'm doing a promo, which I'm pushing now. All three courses with my annual quant analytics. So it's basically 12, uh, 12 times 97 per month. Um, and that's all promoted at 797. And as I said, you just go to this website here. Um, you can easily, if uh, you're not able to see this visually, all you gotta do is go to my website, quantlabs.net. Uh, and then you just go under product. And then in there, the second row, you'll find a product called Quant Elite Full Service. You go view course, and then you can get all the verbiage on the course, it's all the stuff that's offered. And then you click on the green button that says be an elite quant now, and that'll take you to that offering. So it's pretty, pretty simple. Two buttons, that's it. So, and then as I said, I do these, uh, um, these uh, webinars. Okay, so, First, next question is, do courses cover ways to link deep learning and machine learning frameworks like TensorFlow using Python? So I came back with not yet, but I do cover uh, Python 2.7, but I'm also implementing with uh, Python 3.6, which I think is the, the current major version of Python. So here's the thing. I'm planning to move to machine learning. I've been watching TensorFlow, which is pretty well the standard. There's other frameworks like um, uh, Keras and Torch, but from what I'm seeing, TensorFlow is the big one, and Apple just brought out a new one called uh, Core ML. And then, so what, what I'm saying is I'm planning to move into machine learning with crypto and Bitcoin as my next logical step, and I talked about that last night in my webinar, and then that's focusing on crypto and Bitcoin in the next few months. So then he asks about, do the courses cover infrastructure and tools for backtesting? So here's my philosophy when, um, with backtesting. Yes, infrastructure is covered, but backtesting may not work universally, as I've shown in the last few weeks. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about that in a minute. The markets are too random to predict that. So when I'm referring to backtesting, where I backtested, if you go to my more recent videos uh, that I've put out, Specifically, testing, back testing um, various uh, various uh, uh, minute data on the most volatile currency pairs at that time, which was two weeks ago. Um, there were a couple of uh, videos I talked about all around this portfolio optimizer. I back tested that data um, in a variety. This one, this one. Um, a couple other ones, uh, but basically what I was looking for were patterns in the data to say, here's an idea I have, can I back test it? And the conclusion came away with no, you can't because the markets are just too random. They're not predictable, meaning they're not driven in a predictable manner by econometrics or sentiment or some kind of news, um, news uh, event that will put a shock in the system. I mean, they, they exist, they do impact the markets, but they're very hard to predict. So as a result, I was fortunate where that back testing quote unquote process worked for me where um, I was able to identify other uh, trading ideas. I could say, hey, I could see this helping to minimize 
<clears throat> my trading and retain my profits with uh, a downtrend if I was to trade the five most volatile currency pairs for that moment and there's ways to eliminate the ones that were in a downtrend and to be able to still get a pretty decent sortino so I came away with that kind of uh, thinking now again that's all theoretical and that's the problem with back testing as well you'll spend a lot of time setting up the data you'll spend a lot of time trying to finesse the data to look for something uh, that will make you think that your trading idea strategy will actually work and this is the problem with back testing. So the best way to do back testing is take your trading idea and just put it into a simulated trading environment. In my case, using let's say JForex from Duke's copy and run it in demo mode and see what happens. That's the best way to do it as for back testing. Okay. And again, the markets are too random to be able to to be able to uh, forecast that. So that's what I'm trying to say there. <clears throat> um Okay. Uh, now he asks, how about linking external data other than Yahoo Finance data? Now, one of the data sources, so I came back with saying Yahoo Finance data uh, is severely limited since 2017 where they put in this new way of taking out, um, basically changing the way you download the data. So as a result, um, that broke a lot of Python scripts, or sorry, Python uh, packages and R packages, and then had, we had to we had to wait probably a month or a good couple of weeks before they came away with a solution. So it's definitely not a smart way to have a live trading environment dependent on something like a free data source like Yahoo Finance. So you always want to use the broker data, and um, I'm still trying to understand the Ducas copy data, um, but you, there are ways to download the data. Now, I know I might be going off here, but another problem was with Duca's copy. Um, let me see if I can put in the word limit. Uh, now, again, I'm still waiting to hear back from Duca's copy on this, and they have not responded. This is almost pushing a month ago. But the query was basically in this video where it says, does Duca's copy limit the amount of historical Forex data to download? Because I don't have a live trading account, um, I just decided to download as much as I can in a Java program. <coughs> and what I found were exceptions were being thrown, meaning that the Duca's copy servers were disconnecting me, and it put my downloading process in an unpredictable state. So basically rendered it useless. Now, I wanted to know, would that happen if I have a live trading account with Duca's copy? And I still have not heard an answer. So when you look at that, you come back to this point, you cannot use maybe even the broker data as well. So let's say if you're using the interactive broker data, you will have to pay quite an exorbitant amount of money to get access to the historical data. So the other alternative is to use a data source like Ike Feed that you pay every month, you get both the historical and real-time data, and it's very, very affordable. And you'll still save a ton of money. So if you go into my playlist here on the YouTube, channel and you look for um, IQ feed you'll see I've got a lot of videos here to demonstrate time you never seen be enough you can use the um, IQ feed data source in a predictable manner and it's like I said it's free and they cover all the universal um, asset classes out there including Forex futures options and equity data from countries like US, Canada, and the UK, I believe. Now, if you just want to focus on Forex, you can download the Forex data historical and real time uh, using this data source. It's very cheap, 30 or $40. I mean, this is the one I use for that if you want a reliable um, data source for um, back testing, quote unquote. So he asked, do you provide recommendations of other data sources I can purchase for equity options data. As I said, you want to use IQFeed. Now, also, um, I think more and more people are starting to come to the realization that, yes, the markets are driven by fundamental um, uh, data processes using econometric. Um, so another good data source is tradingeconomics.com.
for uh, forex trading, commodities trading, futures trading to see the un understand the relationships between countries um, and their trading. Um, and this is somewhat covered in one of my courses um, that I mentioned uh, under. Let's see here, boy, I got so much stuff. Let me just go back to my website here, quantlabs.net. And as I said, you come under product top there you'll see it the top and then this one course I'm referring to is this one futures and options strategy overview you go through this course which is built off of another course with the source code you'll quickly understand what I'm referring to when it comes to fundamental data out of all the types of data that I've looked at and different methodology or methodologies to understand how trading works and the most predictable is using fundamental yes there's technical as well but use that to time your positions. And the quantitative um, I'm using is in the portfolio optimizer right now because that's going to be a key factor in um, in putting on positions. So, so I'm using all three techniques for the right reasons. Machine learning I'm still new at, um, but right now I'm not there yet. As I've mentioned earlier, okay, more answers about infrastructure for machine learning. Is there anything that prohibits open source libraries like SK Learn? Okay, so when you use something like Python, which is built around um, open source uh, packages, um, the best answer is stick with uh, Python open source packages. Like I, I believe he's trying to say, is it SciLearn or SK Learn? Um, but there's other um, machine learning out, uh, frameworks, as I mentioned. There's uh, TensorFlow, uh, Keras, and Torch. All of them are open source. So what you take with my stuff can be easily integrated with it. Um, and that's the whole purpose of Python. But as I said, the stuff I've got right now is Python 2.7. And the world is now moving into Python 3. Uh, I'm not sure if that covers that. Because machine learning is... is uh, from what I'm understanding, you want to stay in the world of TensorFlow because that's pretty well the standard, um, the standard uh, um, pack or uh, library for machine learning. And the other thing is with uh, TensorFlow, if you stay under the, under the umbrella of Google, uh, be it the Android or the cloud, to deploy your um, algo eventually, let's say. Uh, to and scale it out with the Google technologies. It's the best company out there to do that and it's fairly affordable as far as I know. And with the Android as well, that, that makes a big difference as well if you want to ever go mobile. Now, um, I have I, an IB account. Do they provide data to use with back testing? So I said, no, I cannot provide any data. But um, as I said, I'll be if I provide data to people, I'd be going against the provider in terms of service. So if I wanted to go out and provide uh, raw data from, let's say, IP feed, I'd be going against their terms of service. So no, I can't do that. <coughs> Same thing with any data provider. But what you um, can do is obviously sign up to an IP feed, get access to the hi uh, historical data. And as I said in my YouTube channel, um, under IP feed, you'll notice that there's some tools like Q Collector, unfortunately on Windows, um, that it makes collecting data very easy and um, there's a few other uh, resources as well as I use potentially um, another Excel uh, front-end uh, spreadsheet using a product called XLQ okay so th that's why I really like IQ feed and they're all affordable too so um, this is to answer this person's questions that I forgot and hopefully uh, that'll help out this person and anyone else later